Welcome back to the Twin Spires Jury. I'm Ashley Anderson here with James Scully and Darren Sakali to talk our best bets and fades of the weekend at tracks like Churchill, Belmont at the Big A, and more. And real quick, we'll be offering wagering at Paris Longchamp this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. It's Arc Day, one of the biggest races in the world, and we'll have expert picks from our very own Caitlin Free and our partners at PMU. And Darren, it's good to see you here. Can you let us know about any promos to look out for this weekend at Twin Spires? Sure. The biggest one, uh, we're really happy to announce that we are uh, into the contest game and partnering with the NTRA and the NHC, uh, where we're going to offer a big NHC qualifying tournament on Saturday, November the 25th, that's going to include seven feeder tournaments uh, that lead into that qualifier, the first of which will take place this coming Saturday, featuring the entire card at Churchill Downs. Free to enter, you opt in. You make $10 win bets on each of the races. You watch yourself climb that leaderboard with the points that you earn. And uh, we're going to give away one spot in the qualifier for every 10 participants in the tournament. So if you get into that spot where you're in the top 10%, you're in the qualifying tournament. And we're going to have seven of those contests leading up to the big qualifier where we will give away two seats to the NHC. There's also $2,500 in cash prizes as well, in addition in all these feeder contests. So be sure to go to our offers page and opt in free to enter. If you're going to bet Churchill Downs, why not try to bet it and get yourself into that NHC qualifier? So we're really happy to announce that. Looking forward to the first one this Saturday. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, James, we'll let you start things off today. What is your best bet of the weekend? Well, I'm going to start. I'm going to go to Churchill Downs on Saturday. The Lu Lucas Classic is a $500,000 grade two. It's a Breeders' Cup uh, classic prep at a mile and an eighth. And got a big favorite in there and rattle and roll. Uh, another uh, top contender is going to take a lot of money, American Revolution. But I, I, I don't see much pace in the field. And I definitely don't see any speed in the starting gate in the inside or in the middle portion of the gate. And I like number five trademark on the front end. Uh, he's 12 to one on the morning line. But the thing with trademark to me was I really thought he started to come on last fall. He won an allowance at Keeneland. He won a stake race at Churchill by open lengths. So it was really showed an affinity for the track. And this year he came back, Ashley and Darren, and just came back dull, really ran poorly in uh, three races, including a turf race, but he turned things around three starts back. He ran third in a Salvatore mile against a really nice field in there. Petulant has won three straight this year. The runner up just won the parks uh, mile of uh, parks derby or parks uh, mile race. And in his next uh, star trademark, then won a stake at Horseshoe Indianapolis. And he exits, I thought, a really good second in the Island, where he dueled on the front end with the favored Zozos, put Zozos away, and then got nailed late. I think he improves upon that race. I think he gets a more favorable pace scenario. And I like trademark on the front end with Martin Garcia in the Lucas Classic, Darren. I like it. 12 to 1 on the on the morning line, a bold stand. Uh, uh, this race actually is going to be my fade. And as part of what you talked about is the reason why I'm going to be fading a horse. So we'll get to that uh, in a bit. Uh, I like a horse actually at Aqueduct uh, for similar reasons to why you like this one. And that's going to be a uh, beguine in the uh, gallant bloom, which is going to be a uh, race number five on the program. Six and a half furlongs for the Phillies and mares. I don't see a lot of speed in this field for a Philly and mare sprint. It's a short field of just six runners. Uh, and while there is some tactical speed with a horse like undervalued asset who can lay forward and headland who could kind of lay forward, I think Beguine is the classy speed of the race. I expect it to be on a loose lead here. And when you take a look at this race where Caramel Swirl, Sterling Silver coming out of the ballerina are probably the two major threats to her. Both of those horses are closing types. And if Beguine can kind of get the jump on them, I think Dylan Davis might be able to control this race from start to finish. He's four to one on the morning line for trainer Ed Allard. So a similar tactic that you're applying to the Lucas Classic for me. I like Beguine wire to wire in the gallant bloom at the uh, Big A, Ashley. Yeah, I like that pick. Lone early speed and early speed is winning at a high percentage right now at Belmont, the big A. Well, I'm going to take it over to Prairie Meadows and I'll be backing number two, just like Trista in the Donna Reed. This isn't the flashiest pick, the second choice on the morning line, but at three to one, I'm going to take that price because this horse won by 12 lengths last out facing a number of today's race rivals. She wired a one mile and seven yard handicap at Prairie Meadows on September 3rd. And trainer Doug Anderson's winning at a 27% clip this meet, keeping regular rider Walter De La Cruz. 
And the include four-year-old posted a bullet four furlong workout on September 22nd. Her 92 brisk nut speed figure is the highest last rate speed rating among the field and the best at today's distance. So I'm going to go with just like Trista over the morning line favorite number eight, flat out Stormin. And this horse also is three for six from a mile and 70 yards and also five for 13 at Prairie Meadows. So a lot to like. I'll take that for three to one price on this horse. Well, Darren, let's go back over to rattle and roll the horse that you'll be fading. So tell us why you're not going to be backing that horse in the Lucas Classic. Yeah, really, for a lot of the reasons that James discussed in analyzing the race, you know, there is some speed, but I don't think there's enough speed to set things up for him. He's going to take a lot of money dropping out of the Jockey Club, the Jockey Club Gold Cup. He is shortening, shortening up from a mile and a quarter to a mile and an eighth, which could potentially help him. Maybe he's not just a true 10 furlong type of an animal, and he certainly has run well at Churchill in the past. But again, when, when you have this horse so far back where he's going to have to make up a lot of the running on his own and he's not likely to get a favorable setup here, uh, I just think he's more likely to clunk up for a minor award than he is to, to run everybody down here. Respect the connections. He's a nice horse for sure. But I think that he is uh, unlikely to be able to pass this entire field, which might be what it takes at a short price. So for me, rattle and roll. I'm not saying you're getting them out of the trifecta, but for your multi-race exotics, and if you're playing that NHC contest, uh, I definitely think you can go elsewhere for your win wagers in this spot, guys. Yeah, he. I'll tell you, he really was good this summer. You look at it; he was he ran on he went from the one race, uh, the Pimlico Special, to the blame off of a two week layoff. He basically ran five real bang up good races in a three month period of time. And then he comes back last time in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. It wasn't the strongest field. He turned in a clunker. It's got me concerned. He might not be in the best of form right now for Kenny McPeak. The horse that I'm going to play against is in the uh, Joe Hirsch Turf Classic race number six at uh, Aqueduct Belmont at, at the Big A on Saturday. Obviously, Aqueduct is going to get a ton of rain uh, over the next uh, over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it looks like. I saw one projection it was saying one to two inches Friday night. But if they can save one turf race uh, this weekend, it's going to be the turf classic. It's got some Breeders' Cup turf implications. And Rebels Romance last year, obviously, he won the Breeders' Cup turf. But if you look at his form where he was just like winning a handicap in a group three and then a couple of uh, grade one group one races in Germany, uh, basically he was in just coming, he came in the top form and when he came to America, he couldn't have been any better for Godolphin and Charlie Appleby. That hasn't been the situation this year. He ran extremely flat. Granted it was against a good field, but he showed nothing in his comeback race. And then at three to five last time in the Bowling Green or one to five, he uh, clipped heels, lost the rider. I just don't think that's a very positive effort to m improve upon. And I like others in the Joe Hurst turf classic field if it stays on the turf. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that they'll do everything they can to keep it on the turf. Now, I can't explain to you how much rain we've gotten in the last week here. I haven't seen sunlight. I can't remember since the last time we did. Uh, and it's supposed to rain starting tonight straight through into Saturday. But he's such a weird horse here because, like you know, you said, he went into the Breeders' Cup in great form. I'm not going to hold a loss to Equinox against him because that's the best horse probably on the planet right now. But then, like you said, clipped heels in the Bowling Green. He's just such a wild card, and you're going to have to take a really short price on him. So interesting fade. And it, it this field came up really strong, guys, because the first, second, and third place finishers from last year's Breeders' Cup turf are all in the race. So it is a really competitive group. All right, well, I'm going to take it over to Laurel Park, the Twix Stakes, and I'm going to be fading number nine, Interstate Daydream. This is a horse that I faded in the groupies all, where she finished third at a mile last out, and she'll be stretching back out to one and one sixteenth of a mile, two for six at that distance, and she's failed as the favorite in her last two starts, both non-graded stakes. Hasn't won at today's distance since July of 2022 in the Indiana Oaks, so I'll be, I'll be fading Interstate Daydream. She's picking up Sheldon Russell. A little interesting, he picked up the mount here. His wife, Brittany, has two entries in this field, but I actually like Brittany Russell's entry in number five hybrid eclipse, six for nine at Laurel and three for eight at the distance. Battle Bling also won this race last year over Sloppy Track and has Angel Cruz back aboard. And then also number one Malibu Beauty, I thought was interesting as well. Second in the Timonium Distaff Stakes at six and a half furlongs and stretching out at a longer distance where I think she can do well. So 
I'll fade interstate daydream again and, you know, hope that I am correct again, as I was in the groupie doll. I think, you know, this Brad Cox horse will take a lot of money, four to five on the morning line, but I don't like that price and think this horse can be beaten again as well. Yeah, I didn't like the, I don't like the way, I mean, she's four to five on the morning line, but I don't like how far back interstate daydream has been in her last two stars. She's been back there rating and seventh off the pace. She's more of an early presser type. That's a concern for me. Um, that, you know, she's not in her best form right now, which it look, she may need to be to beat this field in the Twix stakes. Yep. All right. Well, James, what else are you going to be watching for this weekend? I just, I'll mention uh, in the Woodward stakes, um, number law professor, it's race seven at, at, um, at race seven at, uh, at, at Aqueduct, the Woodward, grade two Woodward. Law professor returns in first race since March. He's been freshened since uh, some races. And it's really fascinating. This is everything his connections could have ho uh, hoped for because he arguably ran his best race of his career on a, a very sloppy track in last year's Woodward. He gave uh, life is good all he could handle running second to him that day. Law professor has come back this year. He ran in an off track in the Queens County, one by seven lengths, ran on a muddy strip in the Excelsior in April, one by nearly five lengths. He loves wet tracks. He loves Aqueduct, and he's run his two fastest races on wet tracks at Aqueduct. So, uh, law professor Rob Atris and Twin Qu Creeks Racing Syndicate, they couldn't be any happier with the uh, four projected uh, forecast for uh, New York this Saturday. Yeah, S same race for me to talk about. A little bit of a couple of different notes. First of all, it's the first year that the Woodward has been downgraded to a grade two from grade one status off a couple of years where the fields weren't that strong. And ironically enough, this came up one of the stronger editions of the Woodward from top to bottom that we've seen. Granted, life is good, won the race last year. But as James mentioned, it was a very short field that day. And it kind of been uh, a little bit of the MO of this race. And now all of a sudden we get 10 and you get a pretty solid group courses coming out of the Jockey Club Gold Cup, the Whitney. Uh, I, I want to touch on Algiers here. Uh, this is the horse that was second behind a, a Japanese runner that's going to be heading to the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, in the Dubai World Cup, has not run in six months since then, is going to use the Woodward potentially as a prep uh, if he runs well, not for the classic, it seems, but for the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, Simon Crisper said it looked like he got a little bit leg-weary in the last furlong of the Dubai World Cup, not convinced that he's a true 10 furlong stayer. So they're going to see how he handles uh, conventional dirt here in the States because he did acknowledge that it's quite different here than it is over in Dubai. So Algiers for me is kind of one of the more interesting horses running on the card. If he runs a monster race here, maybe they'll change their minds and divert him to the Breeders' Cup Classic. We'll have to see. We'll also have to see which version of Charge It shows up, which is always an anomaly. You never know which Jekyll or Hyde performance you're going to get from him. And can Zandon finally win a big race? Uh, so this race for me is really, really compelling with a lot of cool storylines. Zandon's really starting to pile up some seconds. Algiers, <laughs> he's going to take some money off of that runner-up effort. This uh, Ushba Tesoro, he came back and won earlier this week by, you know, just romped. And I think he's going to be a real wild card for the Classic. I think he's going to get bet down. People are going to, like, opt for him as, like, this alternative to, like, betting these three-year-olds. They might be a little bit uh, – not too keen on perhaps. And you're right. I mean, if he runs back to the Dubai World Cup effort, he's the horse to beat. That was a really top class showing. That was a deep field. And he ran a, uh, he, he beat a nice horse in Emblem Road, I thought for a second that day. Well, speaking of the Dirt Mile, I wanted to touch on the ak, -AK which is a Breeders' Cup winning you're in for the Dirt Mile. And it'll feature Zozos at 6 to 5 on the morning line, a Brad Cox runner who you may remember from the 2022 Kentucky Derby. But the horse that I'm interested in in this race is number 6, Skyro, at 10 to 1. This is a 5-year-old gelding switching back to dirt for the first time in four starts, one last time racing on dirt in a one-mile allowance optional claimer at Churchill in July of 2022 and had a 97 brisk net speed figure. Finished off the board in his next two starts racing on turf on a further distance. But I think going back to dirt, coming off an eight-month layoff, he's looked really sharp in recent workouts at Churchill. So I like that price at 10 to 1 and going to give him a shot here. There's some other interesting horses, too, with Obesos and even like Stage Raider. But not going to back Zozos here and even think 3 Technique at 3 to 1. Not really liking the price on that horse either. What do you all think about the ak, -AK? Yeah, not not to question Brian Lynch, but it, it's kind of interesting. I mean, look, uh, he's a really cool horse because he runs on anything. 
Um, mm. But the horse had arguably the best race of his career at Churchill Downs. And he hasn't run on dirt again in the last 14 months. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of a bit of a head scratcher. You know, where you went off that race, you went back to turf in, in a stake where he didn't run well. Then you went to an allowance race on turf where he didn't run well. And then instead of going back to Dirk, you went down to South Florida, but you ran the horse twice over synthetic surfaces. So uh, it, it's a little bit perplexing. Uh, they are getting him back to dirt. It's certainly possible he jumps up with another monster effort. Yeah. We'll find out. I feel like at 10 to 1, I'll just take a shot on it because I feel like he looked really good last time he was at Churchill. So we'll see what happens. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We'll be back next Thursday with our bets, bets, and fades of the week. And of course, on Tuesday, we'll have the racing roundtable to recap a number of these stakes that we talked about today. Check out those promos that Darren mentioned at the top of the show. And again, we'll have wagering from Paris Longchamp this weekend as well for the ARC. We'll see you next time. 